normative of the two races that we're planning on doing. <laughs> Three races. Three races. Oh yeah, I forgot about the middle one. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back. This week I'm not aboard Nakama, I'm aboard the lovely Fika. Slim is back on the Karma looking after the boat and keeping the cat alive, I hope. This week, yes, I'm here aboard Fika, the beautiful Nyad 490 in the family. Why am I here aboard a different vessel? Well, basically a year ago, my mom asked me whether I would like to do the Melbourne to Osaka double-handed yacht race with her in 2025. I of course said yes to that opportunity and I suppose this is really the beginning of our journey to get to that start line. So in preparation for doing such an event, which is yes, a double-handed yacht race from Melbourne, Australia to Osaka, Japan. We've signed ourselves up for a few more races. We've entered ourselves into the Sydney to Noumea race, which is in May this year. And we've also entered ourselves into the Sydney to Hobart at the end of the year. And then the Melbourne to Osaka will be the following March next year in 2025. This today and tomorrow, the next 24 hours, is a qualifier that we need to do for the Sydney to Noumea race to prove to her, the race committee that mum and I can in fact sail together. Well, this is the first time we've ever sailed together, just us. So hopefully we can actually sail together and not, you know, I don't know, rip each other's heads off or something like that. Anyway, so we have to prove to the committee that we are in fact capable sailors. So today we are setting off for 150 nautical miles. Basically we're leaving here from Brisbane, going straight out, out to sea, and then turning back around and coming back towards Brisbane. To meet the requirements for this qualifier, we have to complete no less than 150 nautical miles and be out on the water for no less than 24 hours. So welcome to the beginning of the Melbourne to Osaka double-headed journey with my mum and I. We'll be the first mother and daughter sailing team to complete the Melbourne to Osaka double-handed yacht race and we're super excited this is our first sail together so let's get into it <laughs> So if you're following our Wild West series, we left you last week in Dampier after a three day sail down Australia's west coast. And if you're wondering how on earth I'm now in Brisbane, well, there are these big metal things that fly in the sky and they turn out to be way more efficient than traveling by sailboat. Basically, we wanna bring you these race updates as close to real time as possible as they occur. So this is the first of a few race related interruptions to our regular slip and soap series. So without further ado, welcome to the series we've called In Her Ocean Wake. This is my mum Annette, or Nettie. Mum's been on the water since she was little. Spending weekends aboard my pops' timber cruiser was where she found her passion for the ocean and sailing. She's now an offshore yacht master and yacht master instructor, running sail training up and down the east coast of Australia. And this actually won't be her first rodeo with the Melbourne to Osaka yacht race, having competed in the last race in 2018 with my dad as co-skipper. So I did the Melbourne to Osaka back in 2018 on a Redford 12 meter racing yacht uh, with my husband, Jerry. So the Melbourne to Osaka is a double-handed 5,500 nautical mile non-stop race. And yeah, it was pretty amazing. So I'm coming back for a second time. So mum. Yes. What would you, <laughs> what do you want to get out of this next Osaka with me as crew and you as skipper? So I think it's really, really special that you and I are able to do this race together and be a mother and daughter, which is such a unique experience and opportunity. I think it's extra special because we're two females doing this race and I just hope that it shows 
others that they too are just as capable and grow in confidence to perhaps have a go at it as well. I really want to normalise women in sailing that you know there just should be no barriers or boundaries for women in sailing and anyone can get out there. Just popped out. We've got two reefs in the main, just the staysail up. It's about 20, 25 knots. We're sitting on about, whoa, oh, thank you. Hi. I read nine, nine meters and I was like, sitting on nine knots. Yeah, Actually, yeah, we're doing 8.8 yeah, knots, eight and a half knots now, which is pretty amazing. I think we've got some tidal assist, which is nice. No, it's just our amazing sailing. So we're, we're just, just time, we're just amazing sailors. <laughs> So we're going really quickly and um, yeah, super grey and gloomy. I think we're going to get wet pretty soon. It looks like there's a rain cloud coming and um, yeah, that's about it. How are you okay. feeling? Ah, oh, feeling relieved that we've left because my tummy was in a bit of a knot before we departed. So I'm feeling much better being out. <laughs> and yeah, just thinking about the enormity of the two races that we're planning on doing. <laughs> Three races. Three races. Oh yeah, I forgot about the middle one. <laughs> I keep pretending I'm ignoring that one. <laughs> so yeah, all good. <laughs> The gloomy cloud brought with it windier wind, but not a drop of rain. I think we both wished we were heading out into kinder conditions for our first sail together. Although I've sailed aboard Fika a couple of times now, one of those times being in the Melbourne to Hobart West Coaster race, it's not until you sail aboard a boat more frequently that you truly get to know the vessel. Mum is going to have to be patient with me as I navigate the ins and outs of Fika. I think we're gonna get wet. <laughs> so there's just one small obstacle that we have to negotiate. So I'm talking to the camera. <laughs> Mum needs to get used to me talking to cameras all the time. <laughs> We have one obstacle to negotiate. Uh, well, we have two options for it. We basically just have a couple of channels that we need to choose between. Um, we've got a fork in the road. We could either go out the northeast channel to get out of Mawson Bay, or we've got, I don't know, the main shipping channel to get out. We're not too sure which one we're gonna take yet. Um, it's not ideal, you know, like it's coming into the night now. It's basically sunset and yeah, we still have a bit of like, navigating to do to get out of the bay and then we'll start our watches anyway it's windy looks like we're just about to get hit by rain so that's fun <laughs> we were hoping to clear all of morton bay's obstructions before nightfall but we just haven't quite made it in time after leaving late in the afternoon the options to get out into the ocean are through either the main shipping channel or the northeast channel. And while this is way more convenient, the only hesitancy we have with going through it is that it's pretty shallow and sometimes when conditions are as they are now, the waves can stand up. But after much deliberation, we decided to just go for it. So we've just made it through the channel. Oh, talking to the camera again. Okay. <laughs> We've just made it through the channel. We've now set ourselves up. We're on a bit of a beam reach and we're just gonna, we've got 40 miles out to do before we turn around and come back in. So this is up, us set up for the night. Uh, wind's eased a little bit now. Sitting on about 20 knots. Yeah, I think mom's making a tea. So this is us for tonight. We're gonna start watches very sh shortly and um, yeah. 
We're making sure to keep the log updated every few hours as this will be the record that we'll need to submit. As we plan on going nowhere in particular, we set the boat up with the wind on a beam to run out offshore. This means we'll also have a beam reach coming back in too. The night was squally with gusts of over 30 knots, but reefed down, Fika handled it well. And before we knew it, it was morning and we were already on our way back. Good morning, good morning, good morning. We're um, on our way back in now. We made it to 80 miles offshore before we turned around at around four o'clock in the morning. It's around 6.30 in the morning now. And yeah, we're heading back towards Brisbane now. We had a bit of a windy night. I think I've had about three hours of sleep. How'd you go last night? Oh, yeah, good. Just, we really should have put some more sail up, but then the squalls were coming in at 30 knots, and I was glad that we hadn't put more sail up, but we've been underpowered most of the time. I'm feeling a bit sleepy, and I need a hairbrush. <laughs> We've done 103.5. Okay. So yeah, we've got 50 miles to go. Yeah, so we've got 20 miles to the top of there, and then it was what? Another 30, 30 miles in. So, perfect. For two people that can't do maths, I think we've nailed it. it. <laughs> it's super important that we get our maths right, otherwise we'll be back out here really making sure we get our maths right. Not only do we want to hit a certain amount of miles, but we also need to make sure we're out here for no less than 24 hours. This sail has truly cemented what mum and I have signed up for. Not gonna lie, it's a little overwhelming to think about all of these races with everything else both of us are trying to juggle. Mum running a sailing school and myself trying to circumnavigate the country aboard my own vessel. But as my wise mama once told me, just take one step at a time. And I guess this is our first step towards Osaka. So this is really just the beginning of this project mum and I are taking on. Yeah, I suppose the aim of this whole thing is firstly to be the first mother and daughter sailing team to complete the Melbourne to Osaka race. But also, I just think it's a really cool thing to do with my mother. Although we're probably going to drive each other insane, I think if we can accomplish this and get to and get to the finish line in Osaka, then it's just gonna feel amazing. And I'm just gonna be so grateful to have had this opportunity to do something like this with my mom, because obviously not many mother and daughters get to do something like this. I guess we also wanna just show that you totally can do stuff like this if you want to, only if you want to. So yeah, this project, you might be wondering why is it called In Her Ocean Wake? It's a name that my mum and I came up with. <laughs> Basically, I was like, well, I'm following in my, I'm following in mum's footsteps, really. My mum has been sailing since the age I am now and younger. And yeah, I've grown up sailing as a kid. And as my brother went to the mountains, I chose the ocean life, the first thing I did when I got out of school was get myself a boat and do the same thing, travel around and have my home with me and be on the water. So I suppose I'm following in my mum's footsteps. So in her ocean wake, it's sort of a take of just following in footsteps. So I'm following in my mother's ocean wake. <laughs> Mum and I have also been working on a website for this little endeavour. We wanted a place to provide more information about what we're getting up to, as well as a spot to leave updates and blogs, as not only is it about the race, but a lot is the prep just to get to the start line. You can subscribe to our email list, so when an update occurs, you'll be notified. Um, anyway, you can check it all out via the link in the description below. So yeah, this is just the beginning of this whole adventure and whole project. Please do check out the website. There'll be more about us and the races that we're doing and what the end goal is for this as well. The end products that I'm really hoping to achieve and push myself in doing. 
So yeah, you can read about more of that uh, on the website. We'd also be, of course, willing and open for anyone that wants to support the journey, whether that be in a sponsorship, we can put your stickers on the boat, we can put your sails up the mast. I don't know what it will be, but yeah, if you're interested in this opportunity to be showcased in this journey, then um, yeah, please feel free to reach out to us. We'd really, we'd really appreciate having you aboard. Yeah, otherwise I really hope you enjoy the journey. We can't wait to show you more. Uh, there'll be more coming up this year. And of course, the grand finale of the Melbourne to Osaka. Wow, I can't believe it's real. <laughs> With the wind well and truly settled, we thought it was about time we shook a reef out of the main. Though when I heard a donk behind me. Oh. What is that? Oh, no. I thought one of us was about to have to go for a swim. Wait, it's gone. Oh my gosh. We just caught that fishing line. Where, where did that come from? Is there any more? It was just like a couple of boys. One of them, we picked it up. Luckily it came off. It came out of nowhere, hey? Anyway, we're about to take out a reef. And then we picked up a boy. If there was one thing I wanted to do on this sail, it was to take reefs in and out of Fika. Even if it was the case that we didn't necessarily need a reef in. I just wanted to familiarize myself with her different reefing lines and her system. So when we do need a reef in, I'm not there stumbling over the lines and wasting time figuring out which line is what. Down to one reef. I need to get familiar with all of the reefing things aboard Pika. <laughs> We continued on our merry way, heading back the way we came, slowly approaching the Northeast Channel. Yeah, do I look really daggy? No, oh, you're right. What's <laughs> news? <laughs> Howdy. <laughs> We're two miles from the northern red lateral market at the top of the Northeast Channel, and we're going to take the Northeast Channel which takes us alongside Morton Island and avoids the main shipping channel and then we'll join the main shipping channel <laughs> and then head up to Manly. So we've got about another 40 miles to go, I think, something like that. Ignorance is sometimes bliss. When returning through the channel, daylight revealed what we couldn't see last night. This northeast channel into Morton Bay is pretty shallow, so all the waves are, yeah, they stand up. They're not very nice. Last night we couldn't see them, but we did have a couple big ones that we could even see in the dark, and we we're like, ew, they were gross. But um, we're getting a better look at it today, and um, yeah, they're not very nice. It was one extreme to the next, meaning we could shake out the last reef. So how has this qualifier made you feel? Are you excited, nervous? What are your thoughts around? Because this is like made it real, I suppose. Yeah, so like what? sure has. Um, I think it's made me relax a bit more and I know I've got an incredibly capable coast skipper who's young, healthy, fit and active and um, so it suddenly made me feel more at ease. I suppose it's helped us just to identify some of the things on Fika that we need to set up. Like we both were struggling last night just not having jack stays in the cockpit because <laughs> we were getting restricted by our tethers and stuff. So just tweaking the boat to suit both you and I. So yeah, no, I think it's just the beginning of an amazing next, what, 12 to 18 months of sailing together, so. And <laughs> do you think that we'll still be loving mother <laughs> and daughter after this? I hope so. You know, of course we're going to have conflict and tips and I know when we sailed back from Japan together, like I probably had more of a tantrum than you did, 
but you know we're gonna have our ups and downs but hopefully uh well we're mother and daughter and we can work through the conflicts and confrontations and um probably just storm to one end of the boat <laughs> each of us and and take some deep breaths and we should be fine so i think it would just be i can't believe how how lucky I am to have a daughter who's just as mad and crazy as her mother <laughs> and that we can do this together. So I yeah. Simon put it. I said yes, naturally, because <laughs> I'm like my mother and um, cra can't... Crazy is hereditary. <laughs> <laughs> We were asked the other day, what would you say someone might need to take the leap to set off sailing? I think having a little bit of crazy in you definitely helps to kickstart that journey. And then the rest will come with time. Just know that this race is a huge push outside my comfort zone. But I know if I want to accomplish great things, occasionally you've got to throw yourself in the deep end. After the rain threatened us time and time again, but never came through with its threats, it was as though it was building itself up to drop a humongous downpour on us as we wrapped up our qualifier. We've been seeing rain squall after rain squall out here. We actually haven't really gotten hit by one, but of course, as we're coming in, we finally got hit by one. It's wet. We most certainly didn't escape it this time as it followed us the rest of the way into the marina. So guys, we made it in. We completed our qualifier. All in all, we did 160 nautical miles in 25 hours. So we conquered both the minimum of 150 nautical miles and minimum time of 24 hours so we really hope you enjoyed this little introduction for what's to come the next thing up is the sydney to new mia so yeah stay tuned for that make sure you check out the website mum and i created it ourselves <laughs> so let us know if there's any typos we'll see you back to regular posting and um yeah you'll see mum shortly as well bye guys <laughs>